So, today we have, I think, 17th session, and uh, so I named it as a joy of conscious living, introducing the five precious gems or five precious verses. Uh, that book is known as Sadhana Panchaka, means five precious verses to do the sadhana, to succeed in mindfulness. I think we have been receiving gifts from our friends and family. What is the most precious gift that you have received? until today, or you have not received that gift which I am talking about. Uh, we have received gifts in kinds, you know, maybe a watch or a uh, cake or uh, electronics goods or a well, lot of good shoes. Uh, my daughter recently sent me a shoe. I said, hold on, keep your money intact. You need not to say, I'm very happy. You are fine. Now see, there are all the gifts that you are aware of. The Eastern wisdom gives you a gift of a mirror, the glass in which you see. Compare the mirror as one gift and the rest of the gifts. You look at the gift that is shoes, you look at the electronics, you look at the clothes, but you look into the mirror. What you look into the mirror? Yourself. That is the precious gift. The Eastern wisdom always gives us. I don't like shoes, you know. I don't know. It doesn't fit me. But mirror. <laughs> mirror is that gift which is always. The moment you look into the mirror, you see yourself. But we don't ask who we are. Who we are. We are habitual. We go into the washroom looking at our face. Oh, everything is okay. Put some huh? <laughs> things and then we are ready for it. Uh, or for me, you know, I shave it and trim it, you know. But we are never aware of this precious gift. The Eastern wisdom, the principles and the practices, it helps us to know myself. And we seldom are aware of it. We seldom are aware of it. So this text, which I renamed for all of us, is a joy of conscious living. First is living is applicable to all. Is it conscious living? No. Half-hearted. In meditation, we definitely become conscious. If you are committed and you are finding the changes, definitely in meditation, it's a conscious living. That is why we experience the joy and the calm. Do we experience the same joy in our personal life, in our relationship, in our family life, in performing all the activities? So this text, with five verses, 40 instructions. Every verse has eight instructions. So today is an introductory. I'll give you a, an introduction. And in the following sessions, we will understand, we will pick up every verse with the eight instructions in detail. 
that will help us to live in the state of mindfulness or meditation in our daily life. In our personal life, in our professional life, in our social life, what should we do when we wake up in the morning to keep that state of mindfulness? What should we do before we go to the sleep? How we should perform our professional actions, actions in our daily life? Everything is summarized. What pata, what uh, uh, Buddha talks about eightfold path of mindfulness for noble truth. <clears throat> you know, that looks more philosophical, but this teaching is practical. It gives you straight away instructions. People normally ask me how many hours I have, I meditate every day, what practices I do. What is the result? Can I skip a practice? Sometimes people say, I know I don't have a time. I want... It means what? Because I want more suffering in my life. I allow my mind to wander. It is so much habitual. I do the meditation practice. I enjoy. That is done. And the mind is waiting to wander in the world again. We forget. It's not a joy of conscious living. So it means the mind is still impure. It is still heavily conditioned. What should we do? The simple answer is that let continue the practice until the time the meditation chase you in every activity, in every thought, in every speech. You sleep, before you sleep you are in a meditative state. You wake up and you remember you are in a meditative state. Before you speak you are in a meditative state. So this text gives you the deeper insight. It is basically, this text is a project of life. project of the entire life that changes you completely. But we need to follow it. You know, the first verse lays the foundation of mindfulness in daily life. Life, it says that in the first verse, I'm giving an introduction and then we'll go deeper every in the following session. So in the verse number one, it says, can you recognize that you are a student of life and then you grow into becoming a seeker? That is what the verse one talks about. Then it says that life in the world how a seeker lives. Uh, you will know a lot of secrets about me also. So second verse, in the same verse that tells you how to live a life of a seeker in the world, in the family, in your personal life, in your professional life, in your social life. What are the duties to be done? What are the essential duties and the non-essential duties to be done? Occasional duties to be attended to. That is what talks about the first verse. The second verse prepares you for mindfulness in the entire life. It says, can you spend even 10 minutes in solitude? Experience that solitude. You are totally away from the world of people, events and things. Just for 10 minutes every day. The mind says, no, my honey, no, not in solitude, even for 10 minutes, nothing. Can I see myself totally alone? You need not to go to the Himalayas. This master says, no, don't worry, you need not to go to the Himalayas in the second verse. 
And then it says that how you have to approach a teacher. It tells you the secrets. If you approach a teacher in a right manner, the journey begins. Uh, one of the teachings in other texts, it says, are you a seeker? Then you will always ask big questions from the teacher. You will not ask how to manage my anxiety and stress. That is a byproduct of every meditation and mindfulness. Question is, say, big question. I experience meditation, inner calm, inner peace and inner joy that you have been experiencing. So can I become aware that calm and peace is totally independent of anything and everything outside? It has come from inside. What is the source of that calmness, peace and the joy inside? Can I get it? Can I live into this 24 by 7? The second verse gives you those principles. The third verse with eight principles, journey of mindfulness, it says nurturing the life and becoming an ideal seeker. Huh? Stephen and David, you both are businessmen. Huh? The rest, we three are teachers. Huh? Terry is at home. See that. How to become an ideal seeker? We always want to be an ideal businessman, ideal husband, ideal wife, ideal. Add as many as adjectives. But we don't become an ideal seeker. What it takes to become an ideal seeker? And in that ideal seeker, there is a voluntary discipline. We discipline and educate the mind. And in the same verse, when the mind is not disciplined and educated, we say, come on mind, I will take care of you. You have to follow these principles. So what happens? The mind does not move out to the same conditioning, same habits, and causes the problem. Third verse. And the fourth, create a fencing around your journey of the mindfulness. Why? Why fencing? You are sowing the seed of meditation and mindfulness. You have watered it. You have put the fertilizer. The sapling of that mindfulness needs to be prevented, protected. From the animals who may destroy it. Same way. Who are the animals? The impurities in the mind. So the fourth verse specifically dedicates what needs to be done to create a fencing all around. One example I give you. Well, then we will take a deeper look. With a certain formation of habit in our relationship, if our spouse or a member in the family talks a certain thing, our mind habitually reacts. That we already experience. Okay, he is like this. No, she is like this. Okay, let me keep calm. <laughs> Hold myself. With it. it is our day-to-day -day experience, common experience. Okay, this employee, you know, okay, just, just, okay, calm down, calm down. I'll talk to you later. I have already reacted. Socially I responded, but my mind has habitually reacted. So I have to create a fencing around. No, I have to live into the same joy of conscious living. Whatever the others people do. You see that? Very subtle level. You create a very strong fencing around your mind and the intellect in your daily life, in your thought, in your speech, in your action. And the fifth verse talks a lot about, fifth verse, according to the Patanjali, 
it tells you the first stage of mindfulness has four stages. And the final stage of mindfulness, which is known as emptiness, objectless state, it has got only one stage. How to achieve that? What are the factors that helps you succeed? So what happens when you succeed in the final stage of mindfulness? The joy doesn't leave you. You may have a pain in the body. You may have a loss in the business, Stephen, but the joy doesn't leave you. So that joy combines with the wisdom, comes out, goes back again into the mind and says, the world is made up of profit and loss, likes and dislikes. I have some control, but I don't have total control. I cannot change the world. Only thing I have to change myself. So the joy remains intact. And then what happens? The intellect is pure. It is not dictated by a wrong notion. You sit, you become more creative, and you see how to solve the problem in the same joy, in the same cheerfulness, in the same peace, in the same happiness. That is why I say it is a joy of conscious living. <clears throat> You can summarize that I have talked about it, that the entire journey of Eastern wisdom, you engage your mind. Where the mind is habitually engaged? In reaction, in blame, in complaint. So you learn the principle, you listen the principle, or learn, you study them by yourself, you contemplate and reflect, and now you engage the mind in those principles instead of Habitual responses and reaction, engagement. Before, after dating, you know, we get engaged, isn't it? Yeah. So the first introductory session is all about dating. <laughs> we are knowing dating. <laughs> dating with that Eastern wisdom. Those wise people have done it. So engagement is the second step. And third is, after engagement, what happens? Your lifestyle changes. I have a wonderful uh, student who, who doesn't join this uh, program on Saturdays. Previously he was there. So almost about 20 years ago, he got engaged and he called me in the evening. Sir, my, I said, who is my? It was not yours a day before and now it has become my. Isn't it? I'm giving an example of him, engagement and embarrassment. From where this my has come? That my was not used for that girl or a boy. So it means the mind needs to be educated. This is now my principle. This is my way of living. I will not change my pattern now. Engagement to education. So you see, after the engagement, the mind naturally educates you. Well, now I'm getting engaged. I have not to look at the opposite sex. No more. No more liking and disliking. Everything is clear. <laughs> educating. You see that? Educating. And the third step is empowering the mind. Empower means what? In this journey of meditation, you experience peace. Okay, in this today's meditation, so check how long that inner peace and the calmness remains present. 
in your personal life, in your social life, in your family life. Come whatever happens outside in the world, you live into that state. That is what the empowerment is. You start with a small thing, inner calm. Let the intellect talk to yourself deep inside. I will not react to my honey or my employee or my boss or any stranger today. Just today. And you will discover the mind enjoys that. We are so much habitual to react and get the things done. That is what one empowerment. But these five verses teaches you many ways of empowerment. Once you cross the three stages, you have crossed the three verses. Now you create a fencing around through evolution of the mind. What is that evolution of the mind? What is the term evolution is used? Life evolved out of matter. Both science and Eastern wisdom agrees. So when the life evolves out of matter, it means the life was already hidden into it. Then only there is a possibility of an evolution. The mind was involved into the life, mind evolves out of the life. What it means? When the matter reaches to a saturation point, the science says these elements interact, makes a very complex substance. And that one unit of that complex substance is protoplasm. Protoplasm is just, that protoplasm gives you a sense of life. Unit of protoplasm is known as cell. Cell is a living entity. So what is that evolution? The matter evolved to the life. So the properties of a matter and the life are totally different. So when the mind evolves, what happens? What are the properties of a mind now? Likes and dislikes, habits, conditioning, sorrow, happiness. But now when it evolves to a next stage, what happens? Likes and dislikes, leave it. Not interested. Pain and pleasure, not interested. Profit and loss, not interested. You live. Now I don't want to move the mind down. I want to live into that state of equanimity. One of the greatest result of mindfulness and meditation. And the fifth step, the fifth verse, what is that? Total transformation of the mind. Now the mind looks like only a glass, a mirror, a transparent mirror. It is not attached to any dirt on it. It doesn't allow any dirt or the impurity on it. Then what happens? The joy becomes the nature. One of the masters says, what is the true nature? What is the attitude? What is the characteristic of a true nature? It says, Anandam Vai Brahma. It is of the nature of permanent peace and happiness and joy. So this is just an introduction, so remember this, listen to this, and we will follow these five verses, 40 instructions. Don't worry about it. You know a lot of things, David, in the business. You remember a lot of things. 40 instruction is not a big deal. Once you start working in your life, Lara, it becomes so natural. So let us start our practice today. Eyes are closed. And uh, stage one, we prepare and show the mind the inner resources. Eyes are closed. And looking deep inside the head or the heart. Why we are looking deep inside the head or the heart? So you see the principle, we have to go beyond the sense perception and the mental perception 
to find the real self, our true nature, or the state of mindfulness. That is why we are engaging the mind to look deep inside. Simple. So now see, I start the stage one asking you to look deep inside, as if the mind is looking beyond the senses and the mind. The moment you start looking, you will discover a natural steadiness in the body. No, we all have um, a different level of elasticity in the body, uh, different formation, different shape in the size, different challenges. But you can discover, you can discover a kind of kind of steadiness takes over the body naturally. You need not to force it. That needs to be recognized. That will help you. I told you in the, in the fourth verse, we'll talk about solitude. This is one format of the solitude. Do you see I follow all these principles? It comes to my mind naturally. Now we will settle the body in the stage one with being comfortable, being carefree, being casual. Three steps more in the stage one. So being comfortable at the physical level, being carefree at the mental level, and being casual at the existential level. So being comfortable, we follow a simple uh, process, looking at the neck joint. Now you see that you have been doing almost 16, 17 sessions. It has become such an, a natural process, being comfortable, looking at the neck joint. Mind is looking, feeling the presence and experiencing sensation being comfortable and steadiness. Shoulder joints, feeling, being there, presence, and experience sensation, being comfortable and steadiness. If the body moves in the middle, take it. It is the mind that wants to go out. It is very deep, coming from the past impression. Our intellect may rationalize, oh, because of the scratching, I have to do the scratching in the body. No. And the entire body, move the mind from the top of the head to the toes, to all the joints, feeling the sensation being comfortable and steadiness. Now, second is being carefree is at the mental level. And I have been talking about the principle standing across a road watching the traffic. Means the deeper layer of the mind that is your awareness without an object. And the surface mind has a lot of thoughts, feelings, impressions. They are constantly moving. Like an ocean, on the surface you have the waves deep inside. It is the one mind. Our great master Vivekananda used to say, step back. Step back means step back from whatever the thoughts are there. That is the actual understanding of let the thought come and go. And the third point is being casual. The fourth step in the stage one, being casual, being natural. What you do in being natural, you do nothing, but you are still aware. You are aware. So means you know 
There is an awareness, there is a knowledge, there is an experience. You may feel some pulsation, you experience steadiness in the body, you may feel the turmoil and the, and the th thoughts are coming and going, but still, existential level means the very existence doesn't move. It remains as it is. Can I have a glimpse of it? That is the stage one. In the stage two, we continue to purify the mind and move, gain a natural focus of the mind. So the first step in that, looking deep inside the forehead, remember, short, quick breath, but playful breath. You are playing with it. Keep your awareness deep inside the forehead and start breathing. Quick, short breath. Continue, playful breath. <clears throat> when you play, you don't think of a time. You just continue. Playful breath, expansion and contraction of the ribs continues in a playful manner. And stop it. The next step is to start deep, silent, slow breathing. First you inhale into the valley. When it becomes a balloon, the valley becomes the balloon. Continue inhaling without break into the rib case. Reach up to the throat while breathing out. Belly drops down inside in the rib case, deep, silent, and slow. Continue that process. Understand, quick and a short breath activates the brain. The mind takes over the habitual part of the brain. It breaks. And the deep, silent, slow breath, if we need to understand scientifically, it starts creating a new pathways. A couple of research studies confirms deep, silent, and slow breathing activates, stimulates peripheral and chemoreceptors. Chemoreceptors are activated naturally by the body when there is a higher carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide concentration. 
Peripheral receptors are stimulated when the oxygen concentration is high. What we are doing? Deep, silent and slow breath. I told you before, when you start deep, silent and slow breath, precisely the research says, you increase 69% of oxygen concentration more as compared to the normal habitual breathing. That has to stimulate the brain. That has to change the brain pathways. Provided you are doing the practice in the state of being comfortable being carefree and in the state of steadiness in the body. Why? If you don't do in that state, means the body is constantly agitated by the mind. So the same practice will take you in totally opposite direction. The next time you don't want to practice. See that. That is why we laid the foundation. So now once we are aware of deep, silent, slow breath. So inhalation should continue like this. It should take as long as possible as much time as possible. The breath has no breakup in between. And while breathing out, start making the humming sound, keep your focus deep inside the head or the heart. Pick up the goal in a natural manner without any excitement. Your breath rate should drop down to hardly three, four or five breaths in a minute as compared to the normal breathing which is 18 to 21 breath for a normal healthy individual. From 18 to 21 you are dropping it to four and five. It comes down, it drops, it clears the path from its habitual routine. The brain is ready to move deeper into a higher consciousness. So second stage, third step. Continue. Mm. If you are doing as long as I'm doing, means your breath rate is hardly two breaths a minute. And it happens naturally. 
The science has invented a respiratory biofeedback instrument that is normally used to relax physically, mentally, and emotionally. And we are doing a natural biofeedback. We don't need any instrument. That is all about the stage number two. Now we'll move into the stage three. Stop this a humming sound. Allow the breath to follow its normal course. Look at the head and the neck. Now we consciously experience in the stage three what we did. Just now, look at the head and the neck. Looking means you are aware, the mind is there, you experience sensation, relaxation, and stillness. We want to be sure. We educated the mind, now can the mind be empowered to live into that state, to move deeper. And you all are, I appreciate you all are commitment, committed. We are moving to become a seeker. Move the mind on the right arm. Be there. Experience sensation, relaxation, and stillness. It's deepening of the sensation, relaxation, and a sense of stillness in the body. It is not the stillness of the body. It is coming from deep within. Move the mind on the left arm. Be there. Sensation, relaxation and stillness. Move the mind on the chest and the belly. Sensation relaxation and stillness. The mind, what the mind? Mind is simply becoming aware of the right leg. Sensation, relaxation and stillness. The mind goes to the left leg. Sensation, relaxation, and stillness. In the stage three, we want to be sure. And once move the mind on the entire body. From the top of the head to the toes and experience sensation, relaxation, and stillness. You drove home, you have parked the car outside in the garage, you have moved inside, you are sitting in a living room. That is the stage three, the first step. And the second step, <clears throat> now we need not to do anything outside. Car, your body. We need not to touch it. So then the second step comes in the stage three is Nyasa. Move the mind inside the right arm with a little deeper breath in the space either from the shoulder to the fingertips or fingertips to the shoulder. Don't forget. The space or emptiness inside is the highway. Where my highway starts, where I start. You see that? Where I start. So, you start. Breathe inhalation, either the mind moves from fingertips to the shoulder or shoulder to the... Where? It is moving in the highway. Highway is the emptiness in the space and the driver is the mind. Car is 
the breath moving in and out. <clears throat> Sukkar the prana is taking the mind where to the highway. So you get a glimpse, it is bypassing the sense perception, the world outside, and the mind itself. Highway is totally free, blank, empty. So your mind says, let me drive little faster, speed up. And you enjoy that. You have almost a flying experience. The mind is almost flying. It knows. It is conscious. Now move the mind and the breath inside the left arm. Mind and the breath moving into the highway. If you are moving on the highway, your car is also moving on the highway. <clears throat> Who is in control? You know it. The mind is in control and you are aware you are working on the mind. Instead, the mind working on you. Now moving inside the right leg, but definitely in the emptiness in the space, that is your highway. It instantly gives you unusual experiences of visions, colors, freezing of the body, maybe sweating in the body, uh, maybe you experience the body has become so big, so small, what is that happening? The mind is becoming pure. It is separating itself completely from the body. That is the biggest hurdle in the meditation. It keeps the attachment intact by cheating us. Now inside the left leg. Now inside the spine, from the top of the head to the tailbone, from the tailbone to the top of the head, you just become aware of the emptiness or the space where the mind moves with the breath. We'll understand in the following session when the pure mind, which is like a mirror, descends from the top of the head to the tailbone, descending mind brings the pure consciousness force down. That is known as blessing, grace, but it only happens when the pure mind detached rises from the tailbone to the top of the head. 
So the personal effort reaches to a saturation point. The descending of the grace naturally happens. Descending and ascending. You might have heard about angels, descendants, ascendants. That happens in this higher state of consciousness. But we are not at all concerned about that. Now leave this. Moving to the stage number four. We are skipping one stage. And looking at the breath. Three-pointed awareness of the breath. It becomes more and more clear. No change in the rate and the rhythm of the breath. First point, knowing the breath is in and out, feeling the sensation of the breath inside the nose, all the three-pointed awareness of the breath, you live into that. We are doing nothing. We are simply aware. Aware of three points. Why I divide it into three points? To keep your mind engaged, absorbed with awareness. Why? To transcend the mind. Why to experience the state. And do nothing remain as you are living to that state of doing nothing.
Shanti 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 Bring your awareness on the right hand Your awareness on the left hand Your hand should be clear, clean If it is clean, then bring your both the palms on your eyes and open the eyes inside the palms. Know your experiences. Bring the hands down. We will share our experiences now. How are you, Lara? I am good. I had a nice meditation. Yes, I could And it was see. interesting. My mind wandered and then I brought it back to the breath and just brought it back. You see, in the beginning, are. your body was moving, but now it has settled. Yeah. Wonderful. There is a sign of progress. Thank you. How are you, Stephen? Uh, I'm, I'm going to rush. Uh, very, very laser focused in this meditation. Um, from the, the moment I, uh, I closed my eyes, um, I, I just felt that I was in a, another state. Um, my, my breathing was calm, consistent, and um, a lot of bright light. I, I couldn't tell you the exact colors of it, but I, I felt as I was breathing in, it got brighter, and as I let it go, it just dimmed down but never went away. Wonderful. The mind is going deep inside. I could see. Did you feel that? Your eyes were closed and as if you were... Your body was moving like this. Did you notice that? Uh, I did not. You did not, yeah. Uh, I did it not. It was a flow. It is because of that deeper <laughs> insight. The, you are not aware. You are away from the body. Mm -hmm. How are you, Terry? I'm very uh, calm. And I, I, I had a lot of uh, sensations. Good. Like Where walking. is the smile? What? Where well, is the I'm smile, talking. Terry? It's, I can't talk and smile at the same time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Okay. laughs> I felt like I was dropping into space, and I saw a lot of lights, but I didn't really pay attention to anything. Good. And I had one really weird moment that I can't even describe. It is yeah, not exactly. weird, it is better experience. It is yeah. going to help your body also. Yes, and my, I, I was aware of everything all the time, but I just considered everything a, a just distraction. So yeah, I just yeah. continue, continue. Did I tell you guys, I met uh, Terry in New York when I came in 2007? Yeah. And uh, she was working as a... It was a book, book designer. Oh yeah, as a designer. And uh, unfortunately, during that period when we were together, uh, she had uh, started... Can I say? Yeah, you can say. Parkinson. And uh, oh, we lived, we remained together. I used to give her almost two hours and three hours of the practice. Yes. I used and to go comes... to her home in Brooklyn when she was unable to come to my house in New Jersey. But one day, sometimes she used to come. And one day mm -hmm. it happened. You know, you know about the Parkinson. You cannot drive. So she did 
two hour, two and two to three hours of the practice. Mm-hmm. And she asked her friend to give the keys of her car. From Brooklyn, she drove me to Penn Station and she returned. Mm-hmm. No, I will do it. I will do it. I, I, I thought I thought it was easy. <laughs> it is still easy for you, no. I know, my friend. That's why I thought to invite you. How are you, David? Uh, that was a very uh, powerful meditation. The um, Normally I see the pinhole of the blue or the go that opens up. This time, as soon as we started, it was all indigo. Indigo. And then when we did the, the breathing in through the limbs, then everything... Kind of like Stephen, it was like I couldn't, it was like bright light. It was either white or pale yellow everywhere, like oh, for the rest of the meditation. It wonderful. That's a deeper state. We'll talk something. We should be more concerned about experience. Experiences are secondary. They come and go. Experience remains the same. But we'll talk about it. That's a wonderful. How are you, Jerry? Hi. Hi, that was wonderful. Um, for me, I noticed that when we when we were breathing the limbs and the body, that the... Oh, oh. no problem. Sorry. <laughs> computers, sorry about that. Okay. Um, when I was breathing in the limbs, I noticed that it was just an emptiness like throughout, so just less observation of the empty container. Um, Wonderful. So that was kind of an interesting experience. Um, and then the, the breathing up and down the spine is a very energetic process. Very energetic, that's good. Wonderful. So that is all for today's. We'll meet on Thursday. Until then, I'll be sending you this file for you to.